Hey, good morning. Hey, I wanted to show you a little bit about how I fish whenever I get out on the lakes and stuff. Uh, Summertime is fixing to be up on us here real quick. The lakes are starting to get warm a little bit. I live on Lake LBJ, so the water's kind of warming up a little bit here. But I wanted to show you a little bit about how I rig up my rigs uh, whenever I go out to do my crappie fishing and stuff. And I basically use them three different ways. I don't know if I can get all this on camera. Uh, this is my double rig right here. Uh, I tie a loose knot on the very end down here to where my jig's got a little bit of play to it when I jig it. The top one, uh, I use uh, cork stops right here. And I use two of them. And what I do is I keep them about an inch apart. And so uh, I can move these down if I want to fish a little shallower or put my, my jigs a little closer together. But I always leave about three quarters to maybe one inch in between the two. That way that jig has plenty of play in it right there. Like that. And what I normally do too is I run two different type jigs. I run a dark one and I run a light one. And then I can kind of figure out what the fish are hitting on. And I can, I, I do this for, it's a kind of like a quick change in depth real quick. So that's what I do on those. And then I have another rod rigged up. And this is my drop shot right here. And of course the weight is down on the bottom. I always tie mine up. I just don't leave it to chance of that thing catching, my line catching up in that, that little bitty piece right there and uh, staying on. And I use uh, also the cart stops on, on this too. So uh, if I'm fishing in say 10 foot of water and I want to get out to six foot, well I can run that stop up. And I do it the same way I do my double rig. There you go. Just like that. And I can run and it doesn't matter. I can set that at any depth. That's my second rig that I take with me. Third rig is my cork rig. And this one, I just use a, a single jig on the bottom. And then my adjustable cork. And on it, I'm going to move this rod back a little bit. I also have my stop on here too. So if I want to, um, say, fish in one foot of water or whatever, I just pull it out to right there. And there I go. No problem. I want to fish deeper. I just run my cart stop a little bit higher. And then when it goes into the water, bada bing, bada boom. And uh, I'm running uh, different crappie rigs on all of them just to kind of see what they're biting on. Once I figure out what they're biting on and how they're biting, uh, that's what I'll go to. Uh, on the back end of this uh, this video, uh, I've been talking a lot about how I build these uh, swirl head and star head uh, jigs, how I, how I powder paint uh, the jigs on there, and I use two different type methods. I, I've showed you one pretty extensively on the swirl head, but uh, I just kind of give you a, a little verbal on how I do a star head uh, or what I call a star burst, so it's got kind of a burst in it. And then also what I've done too, is on my tool, uh, for y'all that hadn't seen my other video, uh, this comes from Harbor Freight. Uh, I think it's called a hook set. There's four of them uh, that come in a package. They're pretty cheap. Uh, I did uh, straighten it out. I don't see my bent one around here. But uh, I did straighten the, the curl out right here. I just heated it up and straightened it out. Hit it with a hammer. And then what I did on the end right here, is uh, I took and clipped the end of it off with some wire clippers and then put a lot of heat on it and kind of rounded this head off a little bit. Because if you don't, whenever you go to swirl that head, uh, that point digs in and it will dig in, not necessarily into the lead, but it will, it will go all the way through the paint into the lead head to where you got a little bit of lead showing uh, on your head and you don't want that. So what you need to do is if you use a hook set, uh, like this is go ahead and just bob the end off bob it off a little bit so it's, it's not sharp at all kind of a rounded head uh, a guy uh, put a comment in on one of my videos well can you use a toothpick i, I think you can uh, you probably can um, but i haven't used it and you'll probably end up having to throw away a lot of dang toothpicks before it's all said and done but if you do use a toothpick what i would suggest on that too is just breaking the very tip of it off because it's going to be a little bit too sharp uh, and it may dig down to the lead on your 
uh, jig head. So y'all just kind of hang with me to the end of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reposition the camera and I'm not only going to do a swirl head, but I'm also going to do a starburst head. And I'll show you how I do that. And then uh, a little bit later on, uh, probably in just a few days, uh, I'm going to be go out and uh, going to do a little crappie fishing. So look forward to that. Thanks for uh, uh, all your support uh, over the last couple of months. I've been cutting quite a few videos. Uh, my subscriber rate has gone way up real high, and I really appreciate that. So any of y'all that are watching and haven't subscribed yet, I'd appreciate that. Uh, hit the like button, hit the bell for new videos coming out. And also, too, if you'd like any of the jigs that I have, I, I've shown some on Facebook. I show some on Instagram. I show some on TikTok, uh, but I sell them all on eBay. Uh, that's just the best platform for me, and uh, I, I, it, it's easy. It's fast. I can... Uh, get them done, ship them out real quick. I keep a pretty good stock of them. Uh, right over here uh, is just a few that uh, I'm getting ready to go with uh, out the door. So uh, anyway, uh, I'd appreciate it, but y'all hang on a minute. I'm going to reposition this camera, and uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, I'm probably not going to show you the, the paint that I'm using real close because I'm going to bring the camera down really close to the head that I'm working on, and I want y'all to see how I, I do this swirl and this starburst. Uh, on the head, so y'all hang on with me. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to show you the paint that I'm using just to kind of give you a visual of it, and then I'm going to move the camera down right in front of me when I paint these heads up. I am going to have to start my heat gun up, so it's going to be a little bit louder than normal, but anyway, bear with me just a second. But uh, anyway, here's the paints that I use. Uh, I'm using a uh, orange, a chartreuse, a yellow and this is a gloss black just sitting right here and uh, I do run those on fluid beds uh, all but the black and I just didn't have a fluid bed available for it but I normally run in on fluid beds too especially the black if they get any moisture in there uh, they tend to, to glob up on the on your uh, jig head and stuff so it's better if you keep a little air blown in there to where you don't get a whole bunch of paint uh, on the end of your jigs so anyway hang on with me just a second I'm gonna rig this up down here and uh, I'm going to kind of show you how I do this, uh, both methods, real quick. Okay, what I got is a 1 8 ounce uh, ball head. Uh, I think this is a number four uh, sickle hook. And when these come in, sometimes they got little burrs and stuff right here on the end. It kind of messes up your head a little bit. So I just take the file, just kind of knock that down a little bit. Also in this one, a little bit of burr. Knock that down. And you're pretty much ready to go. All right. What I'm gonna do is kind of off camera, uh, but y'all just bear with me. What I'm gonna do is stick it on the heat uh, for just about three or four seconds. Get a little heat built up. And I'm gonna go into the orange. And I normally double dip the orange because it doesn't seem to cover real well. Going into the green, about halfway, about halfway on the yellow. And then I just put just a little tip on the black, right there. Let me show you how it looks that way. So it's got all four colors on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back on the heat. I'm going to get, it, get the paint wet. And I use this little bar right here because my hands are a little shaky and stuff. And all I do is just kind of set it down here. And then I take it and I go in a swirling motion just like this. We'll put some more heat on it. All right. That little blob over here. All right. I'm going to put some heat on it and smooth it out. That one kind of sucked a little bit. Some turn out perfect as you would ever want, and other ones don't. Anyway. 
that one will probably end up going into the trash pile. It just didn't turn out, the colors didn't turn out the way I want. Paint's kind of globbed in a couple of places. Uh, it didn't smooth out, but I will stick it in the oven and uh, once I bake it, and then I can kind of figure out, you know, if I'm gonna trash it or not. Anyway, for right now, I'm just gonna take it loose. I put them on a magnet over here to kind of keep them until I get through. And then this one, I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna heat that jig. And I'm going into my orange a couple of times. Kind of bump it off. Going to my green, yellow, and the black. There you go, right there. Kind of dip the green in kind of deep on that one, but that's okay. Let's throw some heat to it. <clears throat> this is what I call a starburst. And these don't always turn out perfect either. Uh, Got to be kind of careful with them. But what I do is I grab the front. And I just pull back. Pull back. Pull back. Go right to the front of the jig. Pull back. You can do it three, four times, kind of whatever. Now that one right there turned out pretty dang sweet. I'm going to put it under the heat. Just to smooth it up. And look at that. Look at the orange in the black stripe right there. I can't see my camera real well, so I don't know if I'm really staying in focus or not. There you go. That is what I call starburst. You start in the front of your jig, right up here in the front, just pull straight back, you pull back, pull it, pull back, pull back. And you can squiggle them if you want to a little bit. Uh, I don't because it really doesn't give it that starburst effect. So when the fish is actually looking at it, he's seeing those orange, black, yellow lines coming back through there. And uh, I think those fish really like that a, a lot. But there you go, folks. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, if you hadn't subscribed, do that. Uh, hit the like button, ring the bell. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have another video coming out pretty quick. And uh, I'm probably going to be tying some flies and also doing some live fishing uh, probably up on Lake LBJ where I live. So anyway, that's kind of a scoop behind all of that. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thanks for tuning in.